In this video, we introduce Raoult's Law and we explain how you can use Raoult's Law to write the chemical potential for ideal solutions. All right, in this unit, we have been concentrating on trying to write the chemical potentials for species because chemical potentials uh, are what determine the stability of mixtures and so forth. Right, so we know how to do that for an ideal gas, that is the expression of the variation of the chemical potential for a gas with its concentration. And in a prior video we have seen how we can begin to write the chemical potential of a liquid. Uh, we actually have said that if there is an, an equilibrium between a liquid and its gas, then the chemical potentials have to be identical. So the chemical potential in the liquid phase is going to be identical to the chemical potential in the gas phase. Now, uh, while this is fine, it's a little awkward because what we would really like is a way to express the chemical potential of a liquid as a function of the concentration of the liquid in a mixture rather than the partial pressure of the gas at equilibrium, right? So uh, that is actually exactly what Raoult's Law is uh, going to allow you to do. Raoult's Law is going to tell you how this partial pressure on top of a liquid depends on the concentration of the liquid. Let's see how. Well, this was about the 1880s or so when Raoult was just measuring how the vapor pressure of a substance changes when you add solutes to it. Okay, so uh, let's see how that works. And the idea here is that you're going to have some sort of liquid, so this could be water or toluene or benzene or ethanol, whatever it is, doesn't matter, we're going to call it A. And this A has some vapor pressure on top of it, which is characteristic of each uh, liquid, and it also depends on temperature. For example, the vapor pressure of ether is much greater than the vapor pressure of water at room temperature. Okay, now the, what Raoul was doing is saying, well, I'm going to add some other component to this. So this is now going to be B to make a little bit of a mixture. Uh, the question is, well, how does uh, how does that affect that vapor pressure of A? So the finding is that obviously uh, the, uh, uh, the vapor, vapor pressure of A uh, decreases when you add a little bit of, of B to the solution. Okay, and it turns out that Raoul Law found that for, for many substances there was a linear relationship between uh, the vapor pressure and the concentration, actually the mole fraction in the liquid. Right, so the idea is that this vapor pressure of A, right, in the gas phase, was linearly dependent on uh, the mole fraction in the liquid. Right, so it's important to recognize that that is a, a measure of the concentration in the liquid, and the proportionality factor was the, just the vapor pressure of A when pure. Okay, so this is just a vapor pressure. When you have pure A, there's no B uh, added at all. Okay. Again, notice that this is exactly what we needed for that expression because that's something that depends on the gas. This is exactly this vapor pressure that we have right here. But now that's something that depends on the liquid, right? So that is just a mole fraction of A in the liquid. Say if you have 10 moles total and 9 moles of this mixture is A and 1 mole is B, then the mole fraction is 0.90 in A. All right, so that's, uh, that's kind of Raoult's law. All right, so let's try to represent this Raoult's law uh, graphically, and we're going to do it for the two components, A and B. All right, so the way that this is going to look is like this. We're going to plot in the x-axis the mole fraction of A in the liquid, and this is going to run from 0 to 1. Right, so uh, if you have uh, pure A, then uh, in the y-axis, which is the vapor pressure or partial pressure, Right, this is simply going to be the vapor pressure of A when pure. Right, at mole fraction one, that means that there's no B present, and that means that your pressure, whatever it is, has to be the vapor pressure of A when pure. Okay, uh, in the rest of the concentration range, right, so when we when you start to add B, and then the the mole fraction goes from one all the way to zero if you have pure B, then the idea is that that relationship is linear. So there should be a straight line that connects zero with that uh, a point. And again, this should be a straight line. Okay, and again, notice that uh, what we're gonna draw here now is what happens to the concentration of the other component, B, which I probably should write just a different color, B. 
hard to notice that B, if you have pure A, is serial, but if, as you continue to what B, you're going to be uh, um, moving in this uh, direction to get pure B, right? But it turns out that if the solution is ideal, and we're going to explain what an ideal solution is just next, right? Uh, uh, this Raoult's law should also apply to B. Right, so notice that you could actually come up to a situation in which you have added so much B that essentially you just have pure B and no, no A, and then you will have here some other vapor pressure of this component B. And you would also have this uh, Raoult's law for B. Okay? Or you can start the experiment a different way, right? Start with B and then add A. Well, if you were to do that, then you might find here uh, the vapor pressure of B when pure. Okay, which is right here, and then as you start to add A, then you will move into that direction, but they should be linear. Okay, so there should be a straight line uh, connecting those two. Okay, so this is a pressure composition diagram for a binary mixture of two liquids that behave as an ideal solution. These should be a straight lines, and that is Raoult's law. What is more, you can actually write here what the total pressure on top of that liquid mixture should be, and this is just P taught, is equal to P of A plus P sub B. Okay, great. So the condition for, uh, for you to find these uh, linear representations or linear dependence of the vapor pressure on the components, uh, on the mole fractions of the liquid, requires an ideal solution. So let's try to explain what an ideal solution is. Well, uh, an ideal gas uh, uh, was something that required no interactions between the gas particles, right? So this was generally at low pressures when the po gas particles were really far away from each other and the attractions or repulsions were negligible. Okay, so now let's think about what an ideal solution would be. Well, in an ideal solution, it's impossible to have the molecules far apart from each other. Quite the contrary, those molecules are going to be uh, very close to each other, right? So, so they are going to interact. However, even though there's interactions, the solution can still be ideal if the interactions of a molecule of A with a molecule of B is very similar to the interaction of a molecule of A with itself and a molecule of B with itself. Again, that means that uh, while you might have interactions within the pure liquids right here, uh, when you mix them, there's really no change to the interactions because A interacts with B in the same way that A interacts with A and B interacts with B. Right, so what type of liquids could have this kind of uh, ideal behavior? Well, they need to have similar uh, structure. For example, if you think about benzene, which is this molecule, and toluene, which is a very similar molecule, but it has a methyl group right here, you can clearly see that the way that this molecule is going to interact with this one is going to be very similar to the interaction of toluene with toluene and benzene with benzene. So those two liquids form an ideal solution and then uh, they actually have this linear behavior uh, throughout the concentration regime. Okay, so even, even if you have a mixture in which you do not others B throughout, all right, again, those interactions are going to be very similar uh, to the interactions within the pure liquids. Well, very good, so this is Raoult's law, and then uh, the only thing that we need to do in this video is then try to see how we can use this Raoult's law to then be able to reformulate our chemical potentials for the liquids so that they depend on the mole fractions of the liquids and not on any property of the gas. Okay, so again, that's what we're going to do in the remainder of this video. All right, so let me erase this graph so that I can work out here and we'll be done pretty quickly. All right, so we take that expression and then the first thing that we're going to do is just express this partial pressure of the gas using Raoult's law. Okay, so that is going to be very simple. So the chemical potential of the liquid is going to be equal to, to the chemical potential of that component J uh, in the gas at the standard state, okay, plus RT natural log of the partial pressure of J over uh, the standard pressure. And again, the only thing that I've done here is just uh, copy what we had out there. But now is when we introduce here Raoult's law, to express this as a function of the concentration in the liquid phase. So that is going to be the partial pressure of J when pure, or the vapor pressure of J when pure, 
multiplied by the mole fraction of J in the liquid. So again, this is important because that is a property of the liquid. It's the mole fraction in the liquid. That's exactly what we wanted. All right, so let's separate this term uh, by itself. I'll leave the rest where they are. Okay, so if I separate that natural log, what I'm going to get here is going to be the following. RT natural log of P of J star over P standard plus RT natural log of X of J. Okay? Well, very good. So again, this is just a term that depends on the liquid, but here we still have a bunch of terms that depend on the gas, and, and that's still uh, not great. Right? The question is, well, what is the significance of this, and can we relate it somehow to properties of the liquid? All right, so uh, the answer is going to be yes, we can. Right? Let's assume that you have a, a pure liquid J. Okay, so that means that this is not a mixture anymore, Instead, the mole fraction is 1, all right? There's no two components, just 1, which we call a J. Well, if the mole fraction is 1, then this term is 0. And then what should happen is that this should be the chemical potential of P or J. Right? Again, if we make J pure, then this turns into mu J star, right? The chemical potential of J1 pure. This term is 0. And what that means is that this... Uh, terms that we have right here that depend on the gas, whatever they are, they simply must be uh, the chemical potential of uh, J1 pure. And that's going to make our life very easy because then what happens is that if you're not pure, then the way that you express the chemical potential of this liquid is simply the chemical potential of the liquid when pure, uh, which is this term right here, right? Those uh, uh, two terms is simply the chemical potential of the liquid when pure plus the fact that you might not be pure. Okay, that correction. Right, this is how we write the chemical potential uh, for a liquid in solution, okay, uh, uh, when, when it's an ideal solution, when you actually follow Reynolds law. Right, so let me actually transcribe that here, and then we will wrap up. Okay, so that is going to be mu sub J when pure in the liquid phase plus RT natural log of X sub J. All right, so let's try to see if we can read this expression a little bit better. Look, this ex expression is telling you the following. The chemical potential of a component in a liquid mixture is one of going to be equal to the chemical potential if that liquid was pure, plus a correction from the fact that when you mix it with something else, it will no longer be pure. Notice that this correction in this case is always going to be negative because if you're mixing this component J with something else, this X of J is going to be less than 1, right? It would be 0.9 for a 90% by mole uh, mixture, or 0 0.8, 0 0.7, whatever it is, right? This is going to be a negative correction. And what that means is that your chemical potential is going to be less than the chemical potential if you're pure. Okay? All right, so let me summarize here, uh, here what we've done. Uh, we've been able to write the chemical potential for a uh, liquid in a mixture uh, by analogy to the chemical potential in the gas. The way that we have uh, uh, taken a, a step from the gas to the liquid is just by recognizing that uh, Raoult's law allows you to formulate uh, or to establish a relationship between uh, the partial pressure of the gas and the mole fraction of the liquid.